Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, today we're gonna to be looking at part three in the tutorial series of Department 56 Creepy Circus, the, the vignette. And today we're gonna to focus solely on building fences. I've got a lot done behind the scenes already, and I wanna show you that, show you a couple of close-up examples, and then we'll show you step-by-step -step on how to, to build some of these uh, fences if you wanna put them in your village. So with that, let's jump in and take a closer look. Okay, so the first fence that I want to show you is the uh, chain link fence that I've made out of the solder material and the tool material that uh, that is the fabric there for like wedding veils and things like that. Uh, and then it's painted a brown and an orange to resemble rust. Uh, and there's a whole tutorial series on how to do this. I built a lot of this fence for this particular vignette. I'll show you that here in a moment. But that is the first fence that we were gonna look at. And the second fence, this is a new one for me. I wanted to, if you remember, I said I wanted to build an older style privacy fence type uh, weathered wood looking fence for the by, behind the vignette or at least behind the buildings. And so that is this, right? Complete with knot holes and uh, uh, just pretty kind of a cool looking fence. Here's the back of it. This is mostly what you'll see behind the circus uh, and it's all painted. So uh, there's panels like this that'll go down into the foam and create, it's about a four foot section in the back of this particular fence. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I like it. Uh, and so I'll show you step by step how to create this fence. Like I said, there's a tutorial already on the channel on how to do the chain link fence. So with that, let's go over to the vignette and show you kind of the way it looks as of right now. Uh, and then we'll get started building. Okay, guys, as you can see now, I've got just one house in there just to kind of look at the size. That's how I was able to judge the size of the, the fence. It's gonna go in the back and you can see it running along the entire back wall along to the side. And then I told you it's gonna be the chain link fence coming up and around. So let's kind of take a look at that. So here is the chain link fence that is coming out and then around. It's a lot of fence building today and yesterday. But uh, again, the tutorial's out there on this. If you wanna, if you wanna watch that, it'll show you step-by-step step how to, to make this. And so that's the, the fence there. Now I've still got a couple pieces here. They're made, they're just not into the foam because I gotta put that, we're gonna build the uh, back privacy fence that goes here, real time, paint it, and then put that into the, the, the display. And then once we do that, we'll be able to seat the chain link fence once we know exactly where it's gonna go. So looking pretty good so far, uh, I like it. Uh, and so now let's figure out how we're gonna build this stuff. Okay, so in order to make the privacy fence, you're gonna need some materials. The first thing we're gonna look at is these, these little rods. Now these are three foot sections, obviously you've cut them. Uh, it's a balsa wood and uh, in a square uh, type versus the round type. I got these at uh, uh, Hobby Lobby. You can get them at Michael's or Joann's, I'm assuming any craft store or online. Uh, three foot sections of these, I think they were 79 cents for three feet, it's not bad. Uh, and so, um, or maybe they were $1.79. I had a 79 in it somewhere, but still not too bad. And I got enough of those to build uh, the fence that I needed. Uh, I got a whole pack, uh, a couple of packs actually, of popsicle sticks. That's what we're actually going to use to build the fence, the slats in the fence. Uh, and then in order to cut those to size, uh, so this is how they're going to look when, when they're cut. And I just measured, just visually measured on how to cut those and uh, size wise and then cut them. And so the way I cut them is this tool. Now you can buy these at the craft store as well. You, I'm sure you can find it on Amazon. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's a, it's a wood cutting uh, device. It's a, a Gartal. I don't know if you can see the nomenclature there, uh, but these are worth their weight in gold. I think they were 15 or $18, something like that. But they come with this blade here and then two replacement blades. And then you simply just take a popsicle stick or anything else here and just, I mean, you just snap it and it makes the cutting so much easier. It saves you so much time 
uh, by doing that. I did this on the, the Pennywise house that I built, the house on Neibolt Street with all the wood cutting. I bought these for that. They come in incredibly handy and now I've used them again to help build this privacy fence. So you'll need that. Or, or something like that in order to cut. You could use, you know, side cuts or whatever. I mean, as long as you're, you're handy, you know, big hefty scissors or whatever you got, uh, I'm sure will cut. But these make light of the, I mean, it just makes it so much faster to do that. You're going to need some hot glue and a hot glue gun. Uh, or I guess you could use super glue and, and do that. I don't know. It's wood, so uh, you could use wood glue. It'll just take forever to dry. Hot glue is my glue of choice for most things. And it is this one as well, and that's what I'm going to use. And then you're going to need some paint. Uh, and you'll, and the colors that I use, and we'll look at that here in a moment, the, the colors that I use are black, uh, the dark, dark gray, the, la the rainy day gray, and then white. Almost the same methodology, which I do rocks. Uh, I kind of use on this fence to give it that old wood weathered look. And then if you want to put... Um, you know, knot holes or something in the wood to give it a little more realistic feeling. I use a Dremel tool with a little drill bit on it and just kind of go down into the wood and back up. And I'll show you all of that as we get started with the build. So that's what you're going to need uh, or something along those lines to get started. And so with that, uh, let's jump down here and I'll reposition the camera and we'll start building. Okay, so hopefully you can see everything that I've got here in front of me. And so I've got this fence here. Um, and again, I measured this based on the height that I wanted this to sit behind my buildings. And so that's how this was determined how big I wanted to make it. You could certainly make this smaller or larger depending on your project. But in order to make them all the same, I try to line everything up. And so what I've done is I've lined up the top with this marked where this second piece is going to go and then drew a little line with my pen right here and right here so that way everything is good to go and that's how i'm going to line this up in order to uh to get it right so we'll put this out of the way i always use parchment paper if i'm going to glue on wood uh, or any anything for that matter with hot glue because it, it just helps it not to stick we'll start with one side and you can see the little line that i've drawn here and a little line that I've drawn here in order to line up that bottom post. And so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take uh, this piece here and line it up. I'm going to take some hot glue here um, and make sure this is on. So I'm just going to put you know quite a bit of glue right there. Let that cure for just a minute and then put it right up into the top. Smash it down. And let it sit there for just a second. Okay, well that's curing. I'm gonna do the same thing here. A little drop of, uh, of glue. Okay, so about like that. Let that cure for just a second. And the same thing, right where that line's at. Push it in. And just kind of let that sit there and cure for a, a half a minute here or so. While that's curing, uh, we're obviously going to do the same thing over here. So I just want to let that, that sit there for just a second. That should be fine. And now we're going to come down here and do the exact same thing. Except this time, uh, I'll put the glue right on the top of this piece. Actually, I'm not going to do that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the glue... Uh, yeah, I am. I'm going to put the glue here at the top. And right on this line, okay, let that sit for just a second and cure, and then we're just going to simply put those together just like that. 
kind of hold them in place just for a quick second. Okay, now we'll give that just a second to dry. It's not gonna go anywhere already. You can see that the frame is, is pretty well done. Uh, I want it to cure just a little bit more. So while that's happening, we can get rid of this now. We no longer need that. We're gonna start laying out our sticks. I like to lay the sticks out uh, where the bottoms are all facing the same way. So I know what I'm gonna be pulling from. And when I say the bottoms are all facing the same way, I went ahead and cut most of these at a slight angle at the top, just to give it that, that look. All right, and then some I left pretty straight, and then most of them are straight at the bottoms. So that's how that's gonna work, okay? And so we also wanna line this up as well. So with this lined up about like that, that matches, if you can see that. We're gonna start with the first stick here and we're just gonna sort of line that up uh, something about like this. Now, another thing that you can use, and let me grab this. You can shave that glue right off to give yourself a little bit more of something to work with and hopefully you can see that. Okay, so now that that's done, we'll place these side by side again, just to make sure that we're trying to line these up to the best of our ability. And then it's gonna be something about like that, pretty close anyway. Okay, so with that, we're ready to start putting glue on. And so I'm gonna draw just a line for me at the bottom, because this is all gonna be painted about where that's gonna go, just so I can get it started. Okay, so another glue stick there if I need it. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is simply just a little line of glue at the top. To about there. A little line of glue at the top. To about there. And then we're gonna start putting sticks on. Now you gotta go fairly quick because your glue will dry and you don't want that. Okay, so that's how the fence looks uh, when it's done in the front. This is how it looks when it's done in the back. We'll have to clean some of this, uh, this glue up just a little bit, but all in all, pretty good. Now uh, you can see that it sort of matches this one here. Um, and so now what I wanna do is I'll put some holes in it and uh, we'll be right back and show you how to do that. Okay, so in order to put holes in this to kind of match the uh, the uh, knot hole effect in this. I'm using this bit. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little drill bit, a little uh, small little drill bit on the front of this thing. And then obviously I'm just gonna put it where I'd like it. Now I don't wanna drill through the these, right? So I, I need to be vigilant of that, but let's put a hole here. So I'm just gonna sit it on there, turn this on. Okay, I let it wallow wallow out just a little bit to create that knot hole, set it right back down in there. And then go through just like that. And we'll put a few more of these.
Okay, so now we got some knot holes in there, as you can see, uh, and those will be painted uh, and will help to sell the effect. Okay, so with that, we are ready to uh, start painting these. First coat is gonna be all black. Okay, so we're ready to paint. Just a quick recap. We're gonna be using black, flat, back, flat black uh, as a base coat. We're gonna be using uh, something called a deep gray for the second coat, a rainy day gray for the third coat, followed up by a white for the fourth coat. And that should resemble something like this. And I'm gonna keep this out here so I can at least see what it looks like. And so with that, uh, let's start putting this first coat on. Okay, so I think this is dry enough, and we're gonna now take the uh, dark gray and uh, put that on here. So I'll bring this over, well, that's fine. Okay, we're gonna use our rainy day gray. I've got some of that poured out here and this is dry enough. So start to, now this is gonna be more of a dry brushing than some of the other was. So this is gonna go on a little bit lighter. So just uh, take a little bit here, get it on the brush and then just really, really light. Uh, still too much there. Okay. The white should, be, um, it looks better if you go top down, like it would be weathered and running down. So, and you gotta go very light. Okay, so that's how that looks. I'm happy with that. Okay, about like that. Kind of matches the front side a little bit. Let that dry just a little bit. I think I'm gonna put a wash on these to darken them up a little bit anyway and then obviously when that dries that'll that'll look good but you can see the the knot hole in it and uh, how those look and uh, obviously the the back looks fairly good as well so uh, no issues there now let me show you how to put this into the uh, the display uh, and we'll go from there Okay, so this is the one that was dry earlier. This is the piece that I was using to model after, but I've got a hole there and a hole there, and I used a screwdriver to start those. And then this one just simply uh, falls into the hole and just sits just like that. It's pretty simple. And let's, let's take a look at the other one. Okay, so this is the one we just painted, and so we're gonna have to line this one up to get it to go into where we want it. And so if we want to put it right there, we're going to put a hole there, so right there. And I'm 
want to take this one out just real quick. Okay, so there's that. It's going to go right there into right there. this one back in Okay, just about like that. And now we're ready to put our other fence in here. And so this, we're just going to kind of measure from there to there. I've already got some holes lined up. So I'm just gonna push those down. Just about like that. Okay. And then this piece of the fence will go here. Basically right like this. Okay, so that's how that's gonna fit. Now let's take a look at it with the, all the fence up there and see what it looks like. Okay, so now you can see all the fence up, right? You can see we just put that fence in with a screwdriver. See how that fits there. Comes back to the fence we just made. And how that lines up. And then back to the rest of the diorama here. The fence over here. To the fence in the front. Well, hopefully that helps you to understand how simple it really is to create a fence. That's the first privacy fence I've ever done. So. Um, yeah, I just think of things like they would be in the real world. You've got the trusses that go across. You've got the big lumber that, that do that. You've got the posts, obviously, that are going to go in the ground. And then you just got the planks, and you just put the planks on. I wanted the fence to look old and sort of worn out. That's why it's jagged and different sizes and the, hence the color of the paint. But overall... Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. It's a lot of fencing. I've never <laughs> in my life done that much fencing on a project before, and it did take some time, but you saw how quickly the uh, the small little piece went, uh, and so not difficult to do, and if you can do the small piece, then you can certainly transition that into a larger piece if you have to. So hopefully that'll help you uh, if you need to make fences for your vignette or your village. If you want a privacy fence, we got one that's pretty easy to cook up. If you want a chain link fence, another one that's a whole tutorial on that on the channel, go find that and uh, that's pretty easy as well. Um, and then we've done the wrought iron fence, which is basically the dollhouse fence cutting it on the proxon. I still need to do a full blown tutorial for that. That's coming later in the future. So, hey, like always, if you've liked this video uh, and you think it'll help you out, make sure you click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. Certainly is helping the channel to grow. Also, if you uh, feel that you know somebody that would benefit from seeing these videos or would just like to know what it is we do uh, in our hobby, feel free to share the video with them. That also helps the channel to grow. 
Uh, so that's it for part three. Part four is coming. I don't know exactly yet what uh, part four is going to be. Here's what I do know. I've got to create big fences, huge fences in the for the very back of the diorama or the vignette to kind of house those signs. So that's I've got to do. We've got to do some final detailing on the um, the grass and put some dead weeds and things around there. So that's that's obviously got to be done. Uh, I think I'm going to put some light poles with some string lights across the top to kind of resemble a circus. Uh, so we've got to do that. So several things that, that have got to be happening before we can uh, call this one done. So I, you know as much as I know right, at this point on what's coming in tutorial number four. But rest assured it is coming because we need to get this one done. So uh, hopefully, again, you've enjoyed. Uh, take care of yourselves and we'll talk to you guys again real soon.